Welcome to an overview of the Parkside project for Birmingham City University that ourselves, Associated Architects and other uh, parties have been working on providing an operation and maintenance BIM platform for the university. My name is James Hall, I'm a director here at Associated Architects. A little bit of background before we look at the BIM model itself. Um, the project is uh, about 18,500 square metres uh, of space constructed at a cost of about £42 million. Pounds. Um, the building contains uh, the Birmingham Institute of Art and Design as well as a media suite containing TV studios, radio studios. Workshop spaces within the building include ceramic workshop, wood workshop, um, rapid prototyping, photography studios, weaving, a huge selection of technical spaces associated uh, with the activities and learning activities within the building. These are just a few photographs of the outside of the building, some of the internal spaces. We'll look at the BIM model in just a second, but I just wanted to capture really the drivers from the university side in terms of what they thought uh, this BIM uh, operation and maintenance model would be able to offer them. Um, but, but currently the university operates a reactive maintenance system that's spread across multiple systems. So there are um, rooms full of folders of drawings and documents, uh, CD-based information, computer systems in place to run some of the maintenance regimes. Um, and the university have struggled really to keep all of this information up to date over the lifespan of the building. So the objectives for this um, BIM model really, uh, although used by the designers and the contractor, um, was to, to end up in a state where it could be used for facilities management and operations of the building. So what they were really looking for is a single source of information that they could um, run out on their new building here at Parkside but also begin to implement retrospectively on some of the other buildings that exist in the, in the estate. Um, this would be an electronic um, operation and maintenance database uh, that would help them move to a preventative maintenance regime and importantly that it would be accessible on site so needed to be um, used on mobile devices as well. So the university's estate is about 1.8 million square feet of um, area uh, and includes new buildings like the one we're looking at now but also listed buildings uh, and everything in between. So the aim really is that through this um, BIM platform, they'll be able to affect um, small changes, hopefully growing over time to large changes in the way they maintain and operate these buildings. So uh, given the size of the estate and the uh, amount of money that's spent on maintenance, um, even some small changes that are made in the way people access information and time spent doing that can have a big impact over the lifespan of the building and um, over the size of the estate. So right, let's have a look at the model and show you how that uh, this begins to work. Uh, the model we're looking at here is actually one of the test models. We're still adding data to the uh, main model, although we have, we'll have a quick look at that uh, at some point during this demonstration. Now there are four primary ways to find information within the model. The first of those is through 3D views, um, na navigating your way to spaces or equipment. Um, we can also use a barcode search. Um, all of the doors within the building have a barcode on the frame. Um, so using the iPad's camera, we can scan those to find information that way. We can also search for equipment or rooms if we know which room it is we're looking for or uh, the piece of equipment, we can run a standard search on those. And the fourth way is a more traditional method of browsing through a structured set of folders or in library views. So let's take a look at the um, barcode method. We click here onto the barcode scanner. And you can see I've printed out a copy of a photograph I took of one of the barcodes within the building. And that links us through then to information about that room. So we can see here is a selection of data associated with that room, including things like um, is it on the room booking system, what type of clean, daily or drawdown, um, information on the finishes, the carpet range there, um, showing the carpet colour, so reorder, um, repainting, colour references, etc. is made very simple for staff to find that type of information. If we know the room number, we can just search directly here in the search field. I know this room's P250, so I can key that in. Um, and then move through to the room in that method. 
Once we've found the room there, we can also hit in the top right hand side of the screen, um, show in model, and that will take us to a view of that room within the model. I've left this loading screen on just so you can get a feel for how quickly um, the database uh, works and how long it takes to find information or views in, in the model. So here we are within the lecture theatre room. The orange um, mist at the bottom of the floor is actually a compressed uh, room volume which holds all the information uh, about that room. And what you can't see that I'm doing now is I'm actually moving the iPad around in 3D space around myself and that aligns the views um, to spaces in the room. So this allows you to pretty quickly orientate yourself um, when you've got a bit of an obscure 3D view to start with, uh, work out where you are within the space. We can also walk around the model, so now I'm walking out of the lecture theatre into the corridor space outside. And if I click onto the floor area here, I can pull up information about this corridor space. If I click over onto attachments, um, you'll see a number of uh, folders there. If you look at the corridor HL, which is high level, and if we click through on there, we've actually got photographs of all of the floor and ceiling voids with all the services as installed. So by clicking on the PDF, we get a two-dimensional map view of uh, the corridor spaces locating the photographs. So if I zoom into the lecture theatre area, I'm outside, broadly looking where photograph number three is. I can then click down to photograph three and see the uh, services added as installed within the ceiling area there. So that's quite useful for um, staff who uh, may be planning to add an additional system if heating loads have gone up and we need to run more duct work or in, in those areas or beginning to install um, more dating, see the capacity, just a quick visual check in the first instance, save people taking down ceilings um, to find out that information. I'm now going to drop quickly out of our test model um, and go back into uh, the main uh, BIM uh, model um, to show you a couple of other features within this corridor area. So I've navigated to broadly a same uh, view uh, as the previous uh, one within that corridor space outside the lecture theatre. I've selected the ceiling here and by turning that off and orientating the view back up towards the ceiling. You can see in this model we've actually got all the services um, installed in the BIM model as well. So you can see the different colour coded trays, cable trays etc. Um, the colours relate to the different um, service groups. Um, so again a quick way to allow um, staff to look into that ceiling without actually having to go on site and take down um, ceiling tiles. I'm also quickly going to show you in the main model um, the selection of views. So every single room has an established three-dimensional view as well. So you can scan down the list, uh, look for the room number or name uh, you're looking for, click through um, into views of those rooms and then start searching for information associated with geometry in those rooms. So we're back in the demonstration model now. Um, just clicking through to another of the established views we have in here of one of the plant areas. Um, you can see all the services in those areas and again by moving the iPad around uh, your body it aligns the view and allows uh, the user to orientate themselves. So as I look around here I can see I'm next to one of the boilers uh, and there are pump sets down on my left hand side. So when we're in this environment we can click on um, pieces of equipment. In this case we might, we might not be sure what it is but clicking on the details we can see that's a pressurisation unit. Um, the other way we can find information about the systems is if we know what we're looking for exactly. We can just do a um, typed site search, so we could put in here chilled water pump uh, and look for information there. So the first piece of information associated with that is um, the documents and those are uh, system overviews provided by the main m and &E subcontractor so we can get a view on how the design uh, for that particular system um, sits. And then also, if we quickly run that search again, we can actually look for pieces of uh, kit, specific pieces of kit, and then click on the attachments and get through to the manufacturer's PDF information there as well. I mentioned the library search at the start, so we can just flick through a um, selection of folders here to find other pieces of information. So they might be the architect's GA plans if we need to look at those for reference. Um, or it might indeed be uh, searched through some of the M&E systems 
um, for particular pieces of equipment if we know the system. In the model here we've got chill water lined up. You might look at energy meters and again can look at the manufacturer's details, restart instructions, all, those, all that kind of information as well. I also wanted to show the maintenance element of the model and how it can be used in that respect. So if we click through to an atrium view, again, move the iPad around to orientate ourselves. In front of us is the reception desk, uh, looking above to the staircase, and then we can look to the side. Um, we have a door on the right-hand side of the view. So we can select that particular door and then begin to run um, checklists. So we can select a predetermined set of um, maintenance um, review tasks, run through those, check those are okay, pass, fail. Um, we can also add information there, so the door closer is sticking, um, that type of information. And then these are synchronized back um, to the main computer, so organizing maintenance staff can review issues that have come up. The other thing we can do in, in terms of maintenance uh, type of recording is um, push pins into the model. Um, which record issues. So if I select issues there, I can place a pin into the door. That allows me to record any type of observation about that. So we might say here uh, that the door's been vandalised. And then what we can also do is add pieces of information to that as well. So in this instance, I'm just demonstrating how to add a photograph. I'm not in the building, so I'm just taking a picture of an iron hungry sample board that I have next to my desk. Um, we can associate that with that issue. We can also add folders from um, the libraries as well if we need to. And then we can click through, uh, sign owners, and other pieces of information as well. We can show, if we need to, we can add uh, locations. So we can select the room we were in if it's not clear from the model. Here we're reviewing all of the issues that have been logged on the building. So centrally, um, key maintenance staff can review issues that have been logged and then decide how to deal with those. But as we log those issues, we can record um, other pieces of information with that as well. So attachments, so you can see there we've got carpet tiles damaged. So we have photographs of the damaged carpet tiles. Um, you might attach some other PDFs from the library as well. So in this case, I've just added uh, PDF plan which would show where the room is but that could be uh, reorder information and I think for one of the other pieces of equipment uh, I've just added to demonstrate yeah you could add the PDF of the piece of kit that you need to replace so it's easy to uh, reorder in that respect. Um, you can see there as well under each piece is uh, the status of that whether it's open, complete, ready for inspection etc um, and staff can, can maintain that and keep that up to date. So there we have it. Hopefully that's given you a bit of an overview about how the university can start beginning to make use of uh, the BIM models and information that have been collated by the designers and contractors as we move through uh, the construction stages to handover. Uh, and give you a bit of a view about how um, time can be saved on site in terms of interrogating information and spaces, uh, planning maintenance ahead of implementing. Thank you.